Hello and welcome to this SAP CAPM tutorial. In this session, we will be setting up an in-memory database defining an entity in SAP CAPM and exposing it through an OData service. This step-by-step -step guide will help you understand the fundamentals of working with CAPM and OData in Business Application Studio. Let's begin. First, let's navigate to SAP Business Application Studio and create a new project by clicking File menu and New Project from Template. Scroll down this window and select CAP project. In the second window, populate the text fields with the required project details. Let's say the project name as CAP underscore 01 which uses Node.js as the runtime. All the options under the runtime is optional. Check the SAP HANA Cloud option if you wish to connect the project with SAP HANA Cloud later. And enable Cloud Foundry option too. After the configuration of the project, click on Finish button to create the new project file. This will take some time to initialize CAP application folder with basic files. After the initialization, go to the DB folder and create the schema.cds file to define the table structure. Give the name schema.cds here. Now let's define the schema inside this file. In the beginning, we need to define the namespace of this entity. Let's name it as my.bookshop. So, the database will be created as in the name of bookshop. In the next line, we will define the entity books, which will store books details like ID, title, author, and stock. Since we are using an in memory database, this data will be available temporarily during the runtime. Here, I defined ID as a primary key by typing key in front of ID. Also, I define data type of ID as UUID so that we don't need to supply the value for ID. It will generate a unique ID by its own. The next task is to insert data. For that, either generate a CSV file by typing command CDS add data and add the data through the generated CSV file. Then, using the same command again to insert it or go to the storyboard and add data through it. Here, I am using the sample data option available in the storyboard to insert data, which is very easy. There, you can find all the entities which you have defined in the schema section. We have only defined books in the schema section, so it is listing books. And for adding data, there is a text box where I am typing 5 and clicking on add will add data. If I need to add 5 more data here, I just need to click add again and again which will again add 5 more data to the database. Next, we need to expose our books entity as an OData service. For that, create a cat service.cds file inside the SRV folder. In the first line, we should import our database which we have created in the schema.cds by typing this command. Followed by the import statement, we should define the service name and its properties. Here, we define catalog service, which exposes the books entity as a read-only service. This allows us to query books data through OData. To test our service, let's create a test.http file in the root folder and add the following request. Keep in mind that you should always add three hash symbol before a request. Also, let's add some comments here. This is not required, but for good understanding, you should always keep good comments. Now, let's type the get command with localhost server and port 4004 as default. Here in the last section, you can define your entity. Here we used books, so I am using books as the entity. While sending the request, it is showing some error. It's because we haven't started the service. For starting the service, use CDS watch, which will start the service. And if you send this request again, 
still throws an error. It's because we have used the HTTPS instead of HTTP. So let's remove the S part from here and send the request again. So you will get a pop-up window where you can see all the data which is residing inside the entity. Fetching the details of any particular book, you can pass the book ID along with the GET request. Let's try that too. For that, close this window and type the same GET request along with its ID at last. If you notice, you can see there is no option to send this request because we have forgot to add the three hash symbols here. If I add those three, you can see suddenly a send request appears. If I click on that, it will send an error because we used to one instead of any particular ID. For getting any particular book ID, send the first request again and copy the ID of any of the books from there and go to the last section of this request and paste it there. And if you send the request again with the new ID, you can see the records of that particular book. That's it for this video. We successfully created a table, exposed it through an OData service and retrieved data using REST API request. In the next video, we will explore adding and modifying data in our service. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.